uh, say vibration transmissibility uh, vibration transmissibility means uh, transmission of uh, vibration mm, this uh, this transmitted vibration can be due to uh, different reasons of maybe power hand tools or maybe mm, uh, uh, due to different vehicles traveling on vehicle due to that but the hand transmitted vibration is mainly for power hand tools which we are uh, using in the industry and these power hand tools are of different types which are frequently used in industry these are uh, uh, power surgical instruments then uh, floor polisher uh, demolition pick pavement breaker then riveted gun, uh, motorcycle handles, grinder, drillers, or a wide variety of other types of tools. And uh, these are widely used, like grinders and drillers are frequently used uh, in industry, mm, extensively, I should say, in every industry, mechanical industry, because uh, whatever components are manufactured, uh, these needs to be cleaned. Uh, the, normally, in other countries, they do it automatically through uh, robots. Uh, debugging system is their automatic programming but in india mostly it is done manually uh, with the help of uh, workers grinder mans are there drill mans are there so they do it uh, continuously so while uh, they use this uh, equipments vibration uh, transfers through hand to their body to uh, shoulder to the spinal cord and uh, the whole body comes under problem due to that because they use it extensively whole day long so some of the uh, videos we have done a survey and uh, we have taken a lot of reading from local industries mm -hmm. and some uh, images uh, i would like to show you uh, here how they are doing if you yeah, if you look at the first image uh, in the first image uh, the uh, the worker he uh, he is totally in 90 degree bend and his spinal cord is in big threat and the vibration he is using very heavy grinding equipment and vibration is transferring through hand to his spinal cord and his whole body so it is you, you just can understand after few years four or five years if he is working wholly like this what happens to his uh, body muscle so that is a problem and in the second image uh, he's also continuously grinding his he's a grinder man full-time grinder man so eight hours he is continuously doing the grinding job. So there are a few more images. They are they all are grinder grinding operators. So they are continuously uh, working on some uh, automobile uh, components. These are tractor part. They they after casting this comes and sharp edges. They are removing those all sharp edges. And they their job is to perform this task whole day long from morning to evening. <coughs> this is also some tractor component they are polishing the edges and here you can see the second image they are doing the same operation so now what happens they all are the, using uh, uh, this uh, vibratory system uh, vibratory equipment these tools they are using continuously what happens to their health what are the health hazards what is happening so there are mainly three problem happens these are neurological injuries then uh, vascular injuries then musculoskeletal injuries uh, what is uh, neurological injuries neurological is something related to the neuron this whole uh, this whole three categories are all together called hand arm vibration syndrome it is H A V S. It is also uh, said like this. So, what happens in neurological injury? Neurological is something related to uh, sensation. Uh, what happens? You must have observed uh, when uh, someone is first time. Maybe if you are using first time your uh, grinder, you, you must have felt uh, something uh, tingling or numbness. Jisko hum kehte hain heart, like something uh, tingling. We feel it at the tip of the finger even in the first time now if an operator using whole day eight hours maybe in india they are working 16 hours not only eight hours they work overtime for a very little amount of money so this severe problem there comes this is the tingling and the numbness in the hand their hand gets numb uh, while operating the grinder getting numb this finger is quite common but when they are at home at night their fingers are getting numb so that is the problem 
and uh, they uh, start feeling you know pain in their hand so even their dex high level of disability and uh, work impairment this uh, hand function several reduces severely so this type of problem uh, rises due to the neurological uh, there is another problem which happens that is called carpent tunnel syndrome carpent tunnel is uh, actually uh, there is a pain in the wrist happens when they use it for a long time what happens i will show you some images uh, here here is the carpent tunnel through which uh, the median nerve the main nerve passes through this tunnel and uh, when the uh, operator is uh, using continuously the grinder this nerve gets swollen and this uh, tunnel is a very small space there is only space for normal nerve and if the nerve gets swollen uh, there is a pain start heavy pain starts at the wrist so this is uh, called the carpent tunnel syndrome uh, is formed between the between the bones of the wrist and transverse car carpal ligament this is the transverse carpal ligament through which it passes through uh, there is a pain if the median nerve is injured this is the median nerve this is the main nerve which gives signal to the finger when it is to be closed and how to hold this whole signal passes through this nerve so this is that median now uh, this median nerve is injured when they use it for a long time it is most common who operate all types of vibrating tool uh, it is observed that if he if the person is grinder man uh, they uses different types of grinder continuously only maybe small size grinder medium size grinder very heavy size grinders different weight grinders they use it then there the second category is the vascular injuries vascular injuries again it is very common what happens uh, when they use it for a long time their blood flow stops the blood does not reach into the fingers so what happens if blood does not reach into finger what happens finger becomes white and this whitening problem comes even at night when they are sleeping when they are cooking or, or when they are doing some other household work their finger or hand becomes white like the uh, image you can see here uh, so this this is called vibration white finger or secondary renal's disorder also sometimes calls the fingers becomes white and uh, you must have observed in our normal case also if uh, blood flow stops in the hand what happens along with the whiteness the finger starts paining even the palm uh, they feel pain in the palm they cannot hold the thing properly even the glass or bottle they cannot hold it they find it is very difficult to hold because there is a pain in the hand and they start shaking so that the blood start coming in uh, and it does not happen because the nerves are injured so this problem is called the vascular injury Mm, uh, this is uh, vibration white finger is a common name people say is it uh, and again the problem is tingling and the pain the same type of effect uh, it gets in the vascular injuries then the third one is the musculoskeletal injuries musculoskeletal injuries is the problem related to muscle uh, of course if we use it for a long time the muscle pain is there so what happens this is arthritis first problem is arthritis arthritis is a general word which we have used is a joint pain uh, there are a lot of joints in the finger joint is here 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 and here so all of these joints there is a pain then the next is the uh, tendonitis tendon what is tendon i could get some images uh, tendon is the there is a bone and there is muscle and there is something which connects bone and muscle something tough is not muscle is soft and the bone is hard and they are connected by something hard part that is called tendon so that tendon starts paining this is uh, uh, painful swelling you can see this this is called flexor tendon these are the tendons which are there in the finger so if we want to close the hand let's grip something the tendons flexor tendons these are called flexor muscles are there in the hand these are flexor muscles here here and this here flexor muscles uh, they contracts and through tendon we can hold something fine and if the tendon is injured we are unable to hold so that is the problem fine and you can see here this is the thumb tendon this is that thumb tendon and this is swollen part reddish so there is a pain he probably the operator is unable to hold the object uh, there is a severe pain in the thumb 
so this is called tendonitis painful swelling of the extensor tendon sheath of the thumb this is the extensor tendon of the thumb this portion this one you can see this and uh, thumb of flexor tendon of the fingers these are the flexor tendons of the fingers all of these finger parts uh, we usually close with the help of this flexor tendons so these get swollen and there is a problem pain and uh, this is a severe problem with the operators then what happens if there is a pain of course change in muscle fibers although uh, it is uh, there is no crack in the muscle but uh, change in muscle fiber it is observed in microscopically then impaired grip force reduced to mobility and pain in the hand and the arm system it is a, a big problem this is musculoskeletal injuries there are some uh, uh, this uh, biopsies have shown that the significant change in the fibers some biopsies also done and they have uh, seen that there's a change in the fiber due to which there's a pain so these are the main uh, varieties vascular neurological and musculoskeletal uh, problems these all together called hand arm vibration syndrome now statistic uh, statistical data says there is a large number of people are injured in european countries great britain they have a standardized law so what happens if any operator claims that i have a hand arm vibration syndrome they get money from the insurance they can claim it though in india we do not have such a process or some clause as per the government rule uh, i could get some data from uh, great britain uh, health department there in 2014 around 600 people uh, got the claim from the medical insurance uh, for the vibration white finger uh, and uh, carpentrinal syndrome was around 200 in 2013 also quite big number but around 580 people got the claim and in for the carpentrinal syndrome it is more than 200 people so there is a large number of people getting you know money or uh, due to their sickness of course due to their sickness but in india we do not have any such clause and our workers uh, there is no one to listen their voice though they suffer pain um, their managers are not listening to them uh, they says your duty is grinding do it you will get money at the end of eight hours why don't you do it so there is no one to listen to them and there is no rule regulation standardized regulation in india uh, by which they can claim for this that we are sick and uh, take care of us so there's nothing like this in 14 15 in great britain 1 lakh 69000 people uh, have got uh, you know uh, insurance due to the muscle problem muscle related issues while they are using vibratory hand tool then uh, there some researches are done they have seen that 70 percent is or more prevalence of vascular symptoms are found with the portable power hand tools those you use portable power hand tools it is seen that 70 percent is injuries are coming due to portable tools power tools like grinder driller pigment breaker this type of things then uh, and these are mainly due to the prolonged time period they use it for a very long time period uh, and due to that they are getting these diseases now how this risk can be reduced there are standardized methods uh, i'll share with you a case study what we have done and how we have done service but there are some standardized methods uh, this uh, uh, some guidelines are given in iso 5349 in the second version uh, about this uh, reducing risk problems the first is the health monitoring this says that uh, uh, regularly health monitoring has to be done in the industry you need to check regularly who are injured and if there is having some problem there should be some standardized rule in the industry even the manager should know like uh, what should be done if someone is found detected with some problem uh, with the hand arm syndrome uh, there should be some standardized rule to take care of that person his uh, working uh, style or his uh, uh, work load can be distributed accordingly so this type of health monitoring uh, methodology policy should be there in the industry then education and training of course everyone should be educated from top managers to the workers in our country workers they do not know that using grinder is a hazardous thing they says that i am getting a you know money for 8 hours so why i should not uh, use this grinder so they should be educated that if you use it for long time 
then uh, uh, you will be penalized from diseases like you will be sick and your hands will be you know uh, under problem so they should be educated properly not only the worker even the top manager should be educated like what is the upper limit and what is the lower limit and what limit they should not cross uh, they should know about that right then uh, quantification and uh, minimization of the exposure of course uh, every operator who are using grinder or some other vibratory tool they should be able to measure uh, up to what is the exposure limit to what uh, level they are exposed fine and uh, how they can minimize that exposure so there are two uh, methods uh, well, one is the there are two actually reducing things uh, two things that you can reduce one is the uh, optimization of the tool the other one is the optimizing optimization of the job yeah, operator is using tool continuously like one day two day three day month they are using the same grinder say for example same grinder they are using continuously now there is a rotor inside which rotates even in grinder or maybe in the drilling and all other things there is a rotor which rotates and if that rotor normally at the initial state rotor is very finely balanced due to which vibration is very less after some use it gets disbalanced because they are using it operating it so this rotor the moment it, uh, it starts disbalancing the vi vibration increases and very rapidly it uh, goes out of balance totally and of course the cutter which they use initially this is very fine and they cut it very smoothly and very fine operation after some use when uh, the cutter becomes blunt then vibration increases again very rapidly it shoots up so these are the mainly two things which we have noticed uh, while doing a survey case study uh, and if it is taken care of if the tool maintenance is done properly regularly almost every week or maybe every two three days uh, if maintenance is done then this vibration can be reduced because uh, those uh, tools like uh, grinder there are many grinders available bosch grinders then makita grinders then dewalt grinders are there they, from from the manufacturing point of view it is fine when we buy it from the market their grinding vibration level is very low but the problem comes when they use it one month and after one month vibration level goes very high because they do not maintain it properly they do not check it what is the level of vibration so due to that uh, this uh, physical problem starts coming so this maintenance has to be done regularly and uh, by that uh, this optimization can be done by the tool the second one is the optimization of the job suppose there are three if i say the grinders three grinders the small grinder medium size grinder then heavy grinders heavy grinder job cannot be done by the small grinder and small grinder job cannot be done by the heavy grinder heavy grinders are mostly used uh, uh, to remove uh, very you know, large amount of material sharp edges very large material you want to remove polishing has to be done there heavy grinders are used and of course heavy grinders gives very high magnitude of uh, vibration so the job is heavy grinder job and the operator they recruited for operating that heavy grinder so that means that operator is under heavy risk so that can be minimized by job rotation we call it means keep two three people uh, in rotation give them grinder in rotation do not give one heavy grinder to one person only give the give him some other task after we ask him to do only job for one hour same type of job uh, give him some other grinding operation with a different grinding tool with the lighter one maybe or some other task so through job rotation this optimization can be done it means that same person is not exposed under very heavy vibration for throughout the day so job rotation if you do it maybe one hour or maybe two hour he's exposed so then he is saved in that case so this is that uh, optimization of the job the third one is the anti-vibration gloves anti-vibration gloves gloves normally cost around 40 to 50 dollar internationally 
and there is no production house in india who makes anti vibration gloves in india at a low cost 50 dollar means quite uh, very expensive and no one purchases that one in india i have seen many industries they all use the same leather gloves or maybe you know cotton gloves or something like that uh, there is no anti vibration gloves in the market they usually 10 50 rupees gloves they use it well uh, let us proceed further uh, with this uh, initial uh, idea knowledge ki what uh, actually the scenario is uh, we uh, started a case study the objective of the case study is uh, uh, we start we, we have done a survey in a local uh, area chandigarh mohali uh, ludhiana and ambala ki what people are doing so there's a survey we have done and what all equipment they are using is there any problem of hand to hand vibration syndrome with the operator how long they are operating how long they are using what diseases they are suffering so this type of uh, getting some answer of these questions we try to do a survey and what is the exposure level there in industry what is the vibration level at which they are exposed so for that we have done a survey and we have got some reading i will share with you that uh, survey the second we have compared with the international standard iso guidelines ki where our people at what exposure level our people are working and uh, what is the iso standard limit and uh, to what extent it is differing so that comparison we have done then we have uh, in the laboratory we have done some experiment to identify from human point of view is there along with the other things like method of reducing vibration which we have seen like uh, minimizing optimizing tool optimizing work along with that can we reduce vibration exposure by different uh, good posture arm posture okay, if we change the postures different arm point condition maybe like this maybe like this i have seen a uh, worker are working at a very extreme posture condition like uh, maybe at a very extreme suppose this edge needs to be grinded the edge needs to be grinded so they you know their body shape is so complicated like this maybe like this they band it like this and whole day they are like this they are doing the grinding like this so there is a problem we wanted to find out what posture only we checked through arm like in the arm what are the different postures through which uh, vibration transmission is less fine so uh, this uh, this is the third thing and uh, we characterize the vibration transmissibility characteristics we have studied uh, by this so these are the th two three objectives uh, of this case study uh, i'll share with you the first uh, the a survey part what we have done uh, before starting the survey i would like to share with you the equipment which we have used uh, the first is the accelerometer there are different types of accelerometers available uh, we have used lightweight accelerometer 3x is accelerometer xyz it gives acceleration xyz and uh, up to 3 uh, 10g capacity 10g means uh, 10 times of gravitational acceleration uh, means uh, 98 uh, meter per second square maximum it gives mm -hmm. so this type of uh, three four accelerometers we have used and uh, uh, th there is another method of uh, there is another accelerometer laser accelerometers are available in the market but uh, some researchers i have seen this is laser gun uh, cannot project uh, at a 90 degree on the finger because the hand is uh, used for grinding and hand is moving continuously you can show like this this hand is continuously moving and the laser gun is somewhere there on the fixed somewhere on the roof and as the hand is moving it is it is unable to place the laser gun on the hand so because of that uh, reading is not that much accurate uh, so the best option is lightweight accelerometers uh, we have used the same accelerometers uh, as per the iso guidelines uh, uh, the direction of the accelerometers is uh, quite fixed this is uh, uh, z direction of the accelerometer has to be on the um, metacarpal bone this is that uh, finger bone on which z direction has to be there y is the parallel to the shaft axis over which uh, they are holding and uh, uh, x is perpendicular to that surface pump surface x is perpendicular to the pump surface as you can see here this is x is perpendicular to the pump surface this is z and this is y this is the direction by which uh, accelerometers has to be uh, attached over the finger 
this is the direction of the vibration then this is about the laser vibrometer we have uh, discussed about it now some uh, mathematical how we calculated mm, when we measure vibration on uh, tool iso guideline says that should be weighted some weighting factor has to be multiplied so this is that weighting factor we have iso 5349 version 1 then version 2 both of these are very important both of these speaks about what accelerometer has to be used where has to be attached then what is the direction and what is the calculation procedure what formula has to be used so these formulas we have taken from the iso standard uh, this is the weighting factor and this is the acceleration uh, of course uh, the skin thickness varies and vibration transmission also changes. Uh, for that, uh, we have what we have done, we have taken people of uh, same age group almost and uh, same, uh, uh, same uh, work experience almost so that we can get almost similar reading. So uh, there are n number of factors which affects trans vibration transmission. I will share with you some of those. Uh, well, uh, this is a very nice input. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so this is the mathematical part. What happens, uh, how ISO instructed us to uh, take the reading. So this is the tool acceleration tool acceleration for maybe one operator x, y and z direction weighted acceleration and this is the acceleration which we measure at the finger uh, or at the wrist or somewhere at the shoulder if anyone is interested. So at different places, this, these are not weighted, these are normal accelerations uh, under root of it. Mm, uh, so this is the way how acceleration is measured and uh, calculated. Then transmissibility as per the ISO guidelines, mm, normally with the uh, vibrating tool these are measured in one third octave bend from 6.3 hertz to 400 hertz we get reading when the human body okay although equipment can vibrate up to 1200 hertz or maybe uh, 2000 hertz but human body responds up to 4400 hertz only so within that range uh, this is the transmissibility uh, for every frequency uh, this is uh, acceleration Mm, two this is to acceleration at the wrist k stands for either wrist or finger separately we calculated uh, in x direction this is in x direction this is in y direction this is in z direction square and under root take a root sum square take a vector sum we call it and this is the uh, acceleration weighted acceleration of the tool tool acceleration we do not take directly it has to be weighted fine so this is that weighted acceleration we have understood this is that weighted part so this is the transmissibility now there are as uh, sir said on the other side uh, skin thickness there, there are many human factors is there which affects along with that uh, operation time how long the operator is operating vibration transmission depends on that weight of the tool which type of tool operator is if it's a heavy tool of course vibration to transmission will be very high if it is very light tool then transmission would be less fine uh, then manner of uh, handling the tool how he is handling under which circumstances how what is his body uh, you know, posture so that also affects then uh, frequency of the dominant frequency of the vibration the tool which he is using what is the frequency level if it is very high frequency of course it is going to you know affect or low frequency also it affects then magnitude of the vibration amplitude what is the amplitude of the vibration there are many direction of the vibration body constitutions uh, the, there are many things which affects vibration transmissibility it is not only one thing okay. so that's why 100 percent accurate transmissibility measurement is not possible we can measure we can consider only few things and uh, to maximum extent we can try that uh, these readings are uh, can be taken in a better way so this is the thing which we can do so this is the acceleration in x uh, weighted acceleration in x direction weighted y direction weighted z direction the whole thing is represented acceleration hv in the iso guidelines if you open the guidelines you will find the same equation we have taken it from there and there is something called uh, of course uh, operator is exposed eight hours maybe 16 hours so as per the iso they says what is the reference working time they have given a formula this is reference eight hour reference working time needs to be calculated 
because uh, standard limits are set according to the uh, reference uh, reference working time reference working time 8 hour reference working time is equals to under root 1 by t0 t0 is total hour given to the operator suppose 8 hour is given to the operator okay 8 hour means uh, 480 minute is given to the operator and this is the total acceleration in x y z square this value this is a square in x direction a square y direction a square in z direction this is the total value fine and ti means how long operator is exposed for the grinding suppose out of eight hours of course operator is not using grinder for eight hours intermittently is using after every component production, he is skipping that grinder in the ground, he takes rest, he is gossiping, he is uh, taking lunch, he is taking rest, and then again he is uh, using his grinder. So, uh, what is the total minute time he is, uh, this uh, T, T, T I it is called, um, how long he is actually with the grinding? This is the actual time. We have seen out of eight hours, maximum 100 minutes, 250 or 200 minutes operator is with the grinder job. And rest 280 minutes he is not with the grinder machine, either taking rest or talking or doing something. Even the grinder, if the operator is holding the grinder, that time also comes under this TI. So this, this is called eight hour reference uh, working time with respect to grinding so this is the one thing which we need to calculate uh, then this is uh, this is this was for eight hourly reference working this is yearly reference this is called uh, uh, total exposure duration in year exposure duration in one year what is the exposure in the form of year so this is the formula uh, taken from iso guideline 31.8 1 by a8 a8 value is the same which we have calculated in previous one so this a8 value to the power 1.06 this gives us uh, yearly exposure and iso says if yearly exposure mm, this yearly exposure suppose yearly exposure has come six years six years. this is 10 percentage of the people will get vibration war white finger problem after six years not hundred percent hundred percent people will not get a vibration you know white finger problem only ten percent will get after six years will suffer from this vibration white finger so this is the yearly reference uh, measurement exposure duration then european standard is uh, very common this is uh, uh, exposure action value and they have given exposure limit value exposure action value is uh, this is a8 value is given 2.5 meter per second square this a8 this calculated value if this value is 2.5 meter per second square then this is you start taking action now you are in danger preventive measures has to be started okay then this is the limit value exposure limit value and limit value is 5 meter per second square if limit value crosses then the danger alarm is clicked means then you are in real trouble uh, operator is in real uh, trouble uh, hazardous condition so these are the two limits uh, which are strictly followed in european countries but unfortunately it is not done in india even they do not know about this limit values no one knows in fact uh, in the worker uh, level maybe in the manager level people knows it but worker level they do not know about this limit value uh, okay then uh, what we have done i'll show you the cross uh, this is some cross section survey we have done cross section survey means at any time we have not done it throughout the year maybe five years six years we have not done like that uh, maybe in two three months four months within a six month period we have checked uh, uh, workers who are working uh, with this uh, vibratory tool Okay. and uh, in north india mainly we kept it in chandigarh mohali ludhiana ambala uh, we have done extensively we visited industries we spoken to the workers in extreme conditions uh, many people allowed many people did not allow us uh, many people many owners managers were scared that their workers will you know quit the job but uh, still we dared to take the reading and ask the operator Ki, do you have any problem so under these extreme conditions uh, only 42 sheet metal industries allowed us to take the reading 
yeah out of many maybe 100 200 industries we tried out of that 42 industries we are thankful to them they allowed us to talk with their operators and uh, around 40 to 45 degree temperature we have taken most of the readings ambient temperature and in 42 industries around 83 workers we diagnosed we checked 83 workers though those who are full-time grinder men we try to restrict our uh, research only in the grinding because there are many vibratory tools used in the industry so we cannot you know take all the readings so we try to restrict ourselves only with the grinders so 83 workers we have studied and we have found different age varieties from 17 to 62 age group they are working with the grinders and for a prolonged time period normally eight hour shift they are working for 16 hours for very little amount of money though they do not know the hazardous condition of it uh, so this is this is the scenario then uh, we have uh, I, I would like to show you some images uh, where we have done this uh, thing can i go back there escape i would like to show you some of the images you can see you can see some of the images uh, actually people do not allow us to take the image but some of them uh, good people they allowed us so from there we have taken uh, images they are making tractor part some tractor component sorry what this accelerometer Actual yes these are accelerometers okay so these are the few images uh, we could uh, get it from there um, back to there and uh, this is the way how we have done we have uh, prepared one questionnaire also uh, we there we asked how many year uh, you are you know operating this grinder how many vibratory tools you have operated do you have any other uh, hobbies like something like playing tabla or something like this which can which which involves hand then uh, uh, how many hours you work every time what is your age then what grinder tool you used how many months what's your social scenario where you live uh, do you have any problem what physical problem you face uh, we checked their hand i have taken training with the doctors to check how these diseases are to be identified so after that i um, checked their hands and i found many of them are suffering and uh, working this grinding time we have measured as per the guidelines uh, grinding time we have measured like uh, i have seen ke how many people are how many parts one worker has produced per day suppose one worker has produced 100 per per day 100 component they have produced so we measured five four components how much time he spends for making one component so with the stopwatch we have measured for one component suppose one component he takes uh, five minutes in the second he takes 5.5 minutes somewhere he takes six minutes so average of five components we have taken and then total component produced based on that we have taken total exposure time how much time he is exposed uh, with this grinding tool okay. based, uh, based on that we have calculated that time and we measured uh, acceleration over the grinder that was the first survey so we measured it on the grinder then <clears throat> some goniometer we have used to measure their wrist positions arm positions at what angle at what posture they are working hand postures we have measured and total 39 measurements were taken for the group one tools 
there are three types of tools we have classified um, only on grinder i'll show you this classification there are three types of tool grinders we could see in the market one is the larger grinder like seven inches or nine inch grinders which are heavy one then the medium one is five inch or six inch grinders and the lighter one is the four inch and four and a half inch grinders and these grinders are mostly uh, bosch or maybe dewalt or maybe makita and a few local made one so these uh, three categories we uh, divided our uh, uh, grinding task so we have taken readings uh, for group one this first category tool 39 readings we have taken for the first category tool that is four inches to four and a half inch then uh, 25 readings we have taken for group two tools and 23 measurements we have taken for the group three tools which was the heavier one uh, we did not find much more readings and it was taking long time so we tried to restrict with this one this many observations the number of group two and group three grinders group two and group three grinder readings were less because uh, few people uses this small medium and heavier one heavier one is used for removing heavy thick metal uh, so it it is very fine for that so this is the way how we have taken readings if uh, the weight of this lighter one is mostly average is 1.83 kg and uh, for group 2 medium one 2.34 kg and uh, for the he light heavier one the weight is around 5.72 kg it is very heavy so this uh, standard deviation you can see it here so we have taken uh, three classification then uh, we have uh, applied uh, statistical significance and uh, uh, test mm, we have seen that uh, uh, rms value root mean square value of acceleration for the group one is 4.33 uh, meter per second square for group two 4.75 and group three is very high vibration because it's a bigger one yeah, and the range is within this range and uh, we have seen that people are working from 60 minutes to 420 minutes per day means the operator who is working 16 hours he is exposed 16 hours means more than 900 minutes uh, so in that case 420 minutes we have seen he is exposed so this is the highest one very long time they are exposed 1 to 12 hours per day including overtime and they work uh, and uh, this is that uh, A8 value we calculated based on that. Uh, A8 value, the formula we have shown. The mean working time for group one, 338 minute we have seen, then 331 for the mean for group two and mean for 282. And A8 value which we calculated for group one was uh, A8 value 3.58. This is 3.91. This is 4.5 mean. Mean means uh, mean of all the readings. For group one, 39 readings, mean is this much, for mean is this much. And so eight range, if you remember, it was 2.5 only. Uh, limit value, an action value is five. But here, this is more than 2.5 in the readings which you have taken. And uh, this yearly reference value was 8.23 year. This is 7.5 year and this is 6.3 year. That means 10 percentage people who are using this group three tool uh, will get a vibration white finger or hand arm related problem after 6.3 years. And uh, 10 percentage of this will get 7.5 years and this like this. So this is the meaning of it. And then out of 83 measurements, uh, 84 observations, 84% uh, we have seen which are exceeding action values. Exposure action value which was 2.5 uh, meter per second square as per the European standard. So this 84% readings are exceeding that limit value. Uh, sorry, action value. And 24% observations are exceeding that the final this limit. Okay. So I hope you remember, I will show you this, uh, the, this one action value was 2.5 and uh, limit value is 5. So this 24% uh, uh, readings we have found that they are crossing this limit and 84% are crossing this action value. So this was our observation uh, during the survey. 
uh, must be observed from perspective hand yes this observation musculoskeletal stresses uh, this these are not only due to the vibration these are for the prolonged long time uh, operation also because they are working for a long time period now we are during the survey we ask them for the pain tingling and we check their palm for vibration white fingers so there we have found uh, 14% people reported for vibration white finger they says that they have a whitening effect at night or they are while doing some other work their finger gets whitened and they feel pain in their hand so from those readings uh, this is 14% is vibration white finger 29% people uh, out of this 83 readings tingling problem and the most was numbness 40% people have reported they have the numbness problem the finger gets numb uh, numb means shunya uh, ho jate they cannot feel it what they are holding so this is the problem uh, and most of this uh, problems we have seen mild to moderate not severe uh, maybe we could not uh, cover large number of uh, people in this only few readings we have taken out of that uh, we have found mostly a mild to moderate problems as per the stockholm scale there is a stockholm scale 0 1 2 they have uh, measured they says that there could be severe one also fine uh, okay there are different uh, observations we have seen here and uh, uh, during the pain we have seen there is a neck pain reported is only 17% shoulder pain 28% elbow pain 32% forearm and the wrist forearm and the wrist was the maximum problem most of them were facing at the wrist and the forearm now what happens um, this is some statistical analysis in spss we have performed there with the readings and we have seen that these are the significant values significantly different elbow pains are significantly different with different tool types forearm pain is different with the tool type significantly different and wrist pain is also significantly different with the different tool types so these are the statistical result mm, uh, then what happens that we have seen there is a pain in the wrist and the forearm what happens when uh, this long period of vibration reduces tactility tactility means sensation of the hand uh, it reduces when tactility reduces mm, that uh, operator cannot feel uh, how much force is required to hold something because he has no sensation in the palm so in that case uh, the more force sometimes he applies more force to hold the handle of the grinder maybe or maybe some vibrator the moment he applies more force then higher vibration uh, gets transmitted so the and that transmission goes to the forearm and the, due to that there is a problem in the forearm and the wrist problem is mainly wrist is used to orient the grinding operations or maybe welding operations so or the moment orientation comes frequently they are orienting their uh, hand so due to that orientation wrist uh, problem is coming they are facing pain in the wrist and there is a swelling in that carpent tunnel also median nerve uh, is getting affected and there is a pain uh, then elbow angle we have measured elbow angle Mm, with uh, most of the operators and we have seen elbow angle varies from 70 degree to 170 degree you can show me here this is that elbow angle which we have measured uh, this uh, this elbow angle this this angle we have measured from there to here while operating the grinder they uh, perform the job at different angle so this angle we have measured and this angle varied from 70 degree to 170 degree 170 i will show you the detailed chart of it as you can see uh, group one the lighter grinders uh, the range is 70 to 170 because this is a lighter grinder they can move their hand uh, so this angle is uh, dexterity is quite high then the group two tool this is medium light this is 80 to 120 and group three is the heaviest grinder and dexterity is very less 100 degree to 140 degree only i have measured i asked them do the do your grinding as you like then i measured and i saw their angle is varying from uh, only 100 to 140 degree and this uh, while going through research papers we have seen this is lesser angle means it reduces uh, tactility and the moment it reduces tactility grip force increases and vibration transmission also increases they are all interlinked 
with each other so this is the uh, um, this is the first portion of the survey we have done we going in the industry we have taken this readings after that we identified that uh, some hand postures are important due to which we can reduce some vibration and uh, even with the grinders uh, by changing the grinders vibration level can be changed to some extent so what we have done we have uh, uh, set up a laboratory in the experiment bench we have set up in the lab and uh, in the experiment bench uh, we have uh, collected readings for uh, 10 healthy men we have uh, um, gathered uh, those who are already experienced those who are working with the grinding job so we invited them and taken uh, readings from them uh, we have uh, purchased few grinders uh, for one is a four inch grinder the other one is a five inch and then the heavier one three grinders we purchased and we asked them do the grinding job now let's take the reading because in the uh, industry it is very difficult to take the exact reading because it's not controlled moreover uh, uh, managers are looking after they says don't uh, take detailed reading you spend less time so due to that we could not take detailed reading in the industry we invited the same operator who is uh, doing the job there we asked them we to come in our lab and perform the same task with the same material so their uh, tool weight varied from this this is the grinder 5 kilo the heavier one the medium one was 3.3 .3 kilo and the lighter one was 2.5 kilo with this power and rpm capacity we asked them to grind and uh, three situations we created we learned it from the industry how they are doing from there we have learned three grinders we have used 2.5 kg 3.3 kg and 5 kg three grinders then uh, three wrist positions uh, flexion neutral and extension uh, i'll show you images this is the uh, extension this is the neutral position and this is the flexion position in three wrist positions i have seen people are working in the industry so three postures we have taken and elbow angle we have taken 90 degree 120 degree and 150 degree based on some research paper we have taken these three angles and we asked the operator to perform a vibration task at this three angle so this is uh, that images and elbow angle we have uh, made one attachment metallic attachment this is 90 degree attachment 120 degree attachment and this is 150 degree attachment we fixed it on their hand and we asked them to do the grinding and we wanted to get the reading for this uh, uh, three different elbow angles these are the three grinders uh, of course uh, these images are not uh, as per the scale this is the smaller one very small this is the medium and this is the very light uh, sorry very heavy one large as you can see this is the seven inch grinder this is five inch and this is four inch grinder so they are doing this grinding jobs you can see the accelerometers are fixed on the wrist as well as on the finger wrist as well as on the finger they are performing the grinding task on the material this four sensors uh, some four sensors are also attached so that uh, they can uh, you can see here in this four sensors flexi four sensors are attached so that we can measure the gripping forces mm, then uh, mm, yeah and uh, this sense uh, accelerometers are attached uh, as you can see these accelerometers are attached with uh, some adhesive uh, tape and these tapes are neither very tight on nor very loose they are medium uh, because if it is very tight then probably we lose some reading and if it is very light then again it creates disturbances so in between them elbow attachments are fixed on their hands and they are asked to take the readings 50 40 to 50 seconds uh, we have taken continuously the reading mm, and uh, uh, the, these are the data loggers as you can see here these are the data loggers which records the reading mm, continuously uh, data loggers are fixed and these are as per the iso guidelines we have fixed our sensors on the wrist as well as on the finger and this readings get stored in this uh, data logger on the memory card there is a micro memory card sd card is there so it gets automatically saved for 40 to 50 seconds and uh, then two to three uh, readings minutes are uh, two to three minutes rest were given in between them and uh, 
finger wrist at three at three different places finger uh, then the wrist the grip force were stored in data logger simultaneously mm, then vibration transmissibility is calculated uh, after that vibration transmissibility we calculated in two domain one is the time domain the other one is the frequency domain uh, the vibration comes uh, in the time domain normally okay and that uh, the time domain does not give uh, very you know detailed information we converted it into the uh, frequency domain also later on with the help of a software we have a software along with that we have done it otherwise you can do it with the help of f50 uh, fast fourier transformation in the matlab you can convert it so then vibration transmissibility is calculated based on the same formula which we have shown you earlier uh, and the, based on that some statistical analysis spss some statistical analysis is done and we have seen uh, significantly different the grinders are significantly different readings vibration transmissibility readings are different for three grinders significantly different for elbow angles and significantly different for wrist positions Fine, they are not same they are different for different conditions as you can see here um, this uh, yeah uh, so as you can see here elbow angle um, this uh, elbow angle versus transmissibility as the elbow angle increases vibration transmissibility also increases. this is the first elbow angle 90 degree then 120 degree this is 150 degree here you can see 90 degree transmission then 120 degree transmission then this is 150 degree transmission here also uh, this is 90 degree this is uh, no, this is the wrist position uh, extension neutral and this is the flexion position neutral is the uh, the lowest transmission in the neutral case and here with the grinder first lighter grinder transmission is very less medium grinder it is little bit higher and grinder 3 is very high transmission vibration transmissibility is very high in the th third grinder the heavy one grinder then uh, uh, grinder with the different grinders statistical analysis is, uh, found significant grinder one to grinder two grinder one to grinder three similarly two to one two to three they are all significantly different uh, then uh, this the same uh, readings we have uh, statistical analysis we have found for the wrist also the earlier one was for the finger this is for the wrist here also the wrist reading also have shown the same thing the grinders are significantly different elbow angles are significant significantly different and wrist positions are different to find out how much different they are these are plotted this readings are plotted as you can see here elbow angle 2 which is the 120 degree angle there vibration transmissibility is the lowest 90 degree transmissibility is highest for all the machines for first mesh first machine second and third 90 degree vibration is very high transmissibility and here also 150 degree uh, vibration transmissibility is very high uh, but it is found uh, lowest in this uh, medium one similarly wrist position also found a neutral wrist position is quite common the lowest one and grinder one vibration transmissibility is less less grinder three is very high here it is quite a uh, different one as you can see uh, grinder one unweighted acceleration unweighted acceleration we have seen for grinder one it is 4.3 uh, meter per second square g in form of g and 7.65 very high vibration for grinder two and grinder three is lesser 4.81 meter per second square now we calculated transmissibility based on this data and we have found though grinder 2 is vibrating very high but transmission is very high with the grinder 3 and grinder 2 is a little bit less and grinder 1 is the lowest transmission and the this uh, this one is this one is for the finger and this one is for the wrist this is the same for all find the highest transmission we have seen with the grinder 3 we started uh, then studying research papers what other people says okay, why it is different we have found this is heavier the grinder transmission would be heavier the lighter the grinder no matter how it vibrates transmission is not that much heavier grinder means grip force is increasing to hold that heavy grinder at that moment transmissibility is increasing so this is the this is the difference we have found uh, the, the, the due to its weight gripping force this uh, increased find this transmissibility effect of grinder types as you can see here grinder types this uh, elbow angle 2 is the lowest one and uh, 
this uh, the wrist position as we have discussed this is the thing now the, the, then uh, this readings we converted into frequency domain in one third octave band uh, and we checked for we have seen the readings uh, measurable values are coming between 4 hertz to 160 hertz only after 160 hertz there is no reading is almost uh, triple not uh, point triple not something and which is uh, not readable actually so 4 hertz to 160 hertz in one third octave band um, we have measured and as you can see here there is a peak in between all of a sudden vibration transmissibility increases somewhere at some frequency this is the resonance point actually this is the hand muscle frequency and vibration frequency matches and the resonance occurs and due to that resonance this uh, acceleration goes high this transmissibility in few readings we have here in one third octave band uh, this is at 100 somewhere between 100 to 125 this uh, peak is coming shooting all of a sudden transmissibility shoots up at that particular frequency so this is that resonance frequency we compared with other researchers what they have done we have found all has got the same thing it is at the same uh, either at 31.5 or maybe 100 to 125 hertz so this uh, similarities we have found then uh, we have done a regression analysis on the reading uh, which factor is more important then uh, under regression analysis we have seen 0.78 uh, regression factor is 0.78 and uh, uh, here the grinder is the most uh, uh, the coefficient factor for the grinder is the highest 0.21 then elbow angle and then the wrist position we try to make an equation based on this as uh, the grinder factor coefficient factor is very high then elbow angle then the wrist position then uh, we checked our data. This is a normally distributed data. Yes, only within that range. This is only within that range. Then correlation we have checked. Uh, we have seen that as the grief force increases, vibration transmissibility also increases. So this correlation for all the data we have checked, uh, this is quite uh, interesting. Then uh, based on that, we have concluded, we have proposed some work posture. Uh, we have seen that 120 degree elbow angle is the lowest uh, uh, vibration transmissibility, then neutral wrist position is the best position with the lowest transmissibility and with the G1. Based on this concept, we have developed a, a, a work model. Like if operator is, uh, you can, uh, this zigzag motion grinding, and the linear motion. I have seen many people are doing the grinding like this. You can show me like here. Uh, this, this, if it is a grinder tool, if it is a grinder one, they are grinding like this. Suppose edge polishing is there, they are grinding like this. I have seen they are, this angle is varying. This angle, elbow angle, this elbow angle is varying from 90 degree to very high degree. It is continuously varying. So this, this variation from this study, we have seen that if angle goes less, transmission is very high. If elbow angle is again very high, transmissibility is again increases. So that means if operator is grinding like this, he is getting tired very soon. His fatigueness, you know, his tiredness increases in that. Whereas if he performs grinding like this linearly, keeping this angle particular it is not exactly keeping the constant is not possible exactly but uh, they can maintain to some range maybe around 120 and constantly they do the grinding the fatigue can uh, reduce they will be less tired so so this is this con uh, we concluded here uh, that uh, this so this is a work posture we concluded keeping approximately 120 degree uh, if uh, grinder moves uh, linearly it is uh, the better output you can get transmissibility will be lesser fatigueness will be lesser and this is not recommended so we conclude based on this all of this uh, our case studies first we have done um, she different sheet metal industries we have done survey and we have found that uh, um, numbness is 40 percent is tingling 29 percent and vibration white finger is 13 percent and vibration uh, exposure value exceeding 84 percent is and limit value is exceeding 24 percent and based on the other readings and statistical analysis we suggested that those heavy grinders can be hanged 
there is some hanging method has to be there on the roof and they should operate uh, they should just operate it they should not take the weight of the heavy grinder so that may reduce vibration transmissibility this is one concluded thing we concluded from the first part and the second phase which we have done uh, uh, research at the lab there uh, some statistical analysis we have done on the statistical analysis uh, we have seen that uh, grinder 3 is vibration transmissibility is maximum in that case and 90 degree and 180 degree also vibration transmissibility is maximum uh, pick um, maximum transmissibility is seen 3.35, then 5.85, and 7.89 meter per no, 7.59. And the peak is observed between 100 to 125 hertz, which is resonance, in fact. Uh, then correlation factor we have found 0.78. And the optimum value we have found with the 120 degree elbow angle, neutral positions, and with the G1 grinder and base so based on that we have suggested that uh, uh, optimum work posture some limitations we have seen in our study one is that we have studied only small medium uh, scale industries uh, we could not go to large scale industries like uh, the server was telling there was a large number of other industries available so we could not reach to them um, had we reached there we would have got a better reading so that was one limitation. Second uh, uh, is prevalence of uh, hand arm vibration su survey suggest use only angle grinder we have studied. There are n number of other uh, hand tools which are vibrating tools which are used extensively. We could not do that. L and in the laboratory process, experimentation process, only 10 subjects we have studied. Uh, we could have done better. If uh, more uh, experiments are done, then more readings, uh, accurate readings we can get then some mathematical model can also be developed which we could not do so this was the limitation further scope of this study is uh, um, large number of industries can be studied fine different other tools can be studied we have studied only three postures wrist and hand posture some other factors should also be studied so this is the future scope and uh, anti-vibration gloves can be designed based on those frequency we have found where the resonance is coming and at what frequency the vibration is increasing based on that anti-vibration gloves can be designed at low cost but the research can be done on this so this was the scope for the future work that is the thing which we have done